life what is life what is reality where actually are we do you live in a city or a village it doesn't really matter does it because we all live on a giant floating rock in space and that rock is revolving around a star called the sun and the sun is moving fast around the center of the galaxy that is the milky way which contains billions of other stars like our sun doing the same with its own planets and that galaxy could be present in a cluster or a super cluster which contains billions of more galaxies in it that all move apart from each other while the clusters themselves move away from each other as well the whole universe can be imagined as a network of these clusters with voids or spaces between them and this so called universe is expanding rapidly the origin of the universe is explained by the big bang theory which most people have probably learned about it And when I first heard about it I had two questions. The first question I had, where exactly was this singularity which had exploded with unimaginable amounts of heat and energy to form the universe as we know it? Where was that? And what exactly is a singularity? I didn't understand that. And the second question I had is what's outside of our universe? I mean, what's beyond its ever expanding borders? So in all of this, do we even matter? Does life even matter? what even is life what are we these are the questions of the universe no one has undeniable proven answers to any of them however in this video we're going to try to get an idea of the possibilities of what the answers could be so what actually is life and could there be other life in the universe that's not us to understand the concept of life and to try to find answers to these questions we're going to have to dive deep into history and into the ocean to find and understand the origin of how life started life started from a primordial soup in the ocean the situations were right for creating a chemical concoction in boiling seawater with more methane hydrogen and ammonia in the atmosphere with lots of thunderstorms and high temperatures of about 800 degrees celsius this occurred around 3 billion years ago to form the first organic molecules This was actually proven by the Urey Miller experiment which was conducted by two scientists and they kind of simulated all of these conditions in their own lab and they found out that it indeed did produce organic molecules like RNA and proteins and polysaccharides. Chemical evolution is suggested and it is more believable and the first life originated from non-living molecules evolving into something maybe similar to a virus viruses are still controversial in the scientific society whether they are living or not so that's why at that time it was probably in between a living and a non-living state by our current definition and characteristic features whatever this developing life form was this chemical concoction of boiling seawater and all is called a prebiotic soup or a haldane soup And after these first organic molecules like RNA and proteins and etc formed the first cellular microorganisms probably didn't form until 2000 million years ago these kept evolving forming single celled organisms and then later multiple celled organisms simultaneously while all this was happening the environment of the earth also changed and it wasn't primarily composed of methane hydrogen and ammonia like before while forming life but it slowly started changing and becoming the way that it is today that is more nitrogen in the atmosphere and more oxygen and the situation has changed as well like less of the thunderstorms and less temperature of the earth's surface the ozone layer and all the layers of the atmosphere and everything basically developed into what it is today so basically the previous conditions of this urey miller experiment and earth that was 3 billion years ago are not present today anywhere on earth The environment that we live in today is one that organisms have adapted to and evolved to accordingly. Microorganisms like anaerobic bacteria don't need oxygen. They can also exist in outer space and in very extreme conditions that we can't. And it's been proven that they can also survive on comets and asteroids. This also suggests the possibility that microorganisms could have come from an asteroid long ago, billions of years back. and fallen on earth and then evolved into the life forms that we see today so do aliens exist could extraterrestrial life exist somewhere considering the unfathomable size of the universe and the conditions that are required to produce the life that we know yes for sure it's very possible indeed 
that a life like our cellular microbial type of life that has evolved on Earth and originated on Earth, or some kind of life that is similar to the one on Earth but with different conditions and requirements, could exist. Like even a non-cellular, non-organic type of organism could exist that doesn't have to specifically follow our definition of life. Maybe that organism or that entity that could be living, growing, reproducing, dying could also depend on a different element instead of oxygen. Maybe it could require some other compound instead of water. Who knows? Maybe it derives its energy directly from stars, like our plants. Or it could be growing on a star. Or it could have some kind of chemical production of energy, like some form of nutrition that's different from ours. And maybe that form of nutrition could be on inorganic materials. So on the grand scale of the universe, an organism that has its own new metabolic reactions are different from what we normally know or have on Earth doesn't sound so crazy. So could it exist? Who knows? It definitely is possible. And the chances of it being possible are not that slim. It's been scientifically calculated that our universe's diameter is about 93 billion light years. And I'm not going to get into the shape of the universe or any of that, but if it's that big, and that's just the observable universe. There's still more beyond that that we haven't seen. And what we did observe is just the light that has been from that many years ago. So in that many light years of the distance that it takes for light to travel in a year, it is definitely possible and the chances are pretty high actually, I'd say, that an alien or some form of this kind of life entity could exist somewhere. Our Earth and its conditions are infinitely small compared to the amount of planets and the amount of possible star systems that could host life or conditions for something like life or a different entity to originate. This is why I think it's definitely possible and the chances are pretty good that aliens or something that is a weird life form like entity does exist. So what about the future of life? What about the future of humans? If humans evolved from ape-like ancestors taking a period of approximately 6 million years, Imagine what humans would look like in another 6 million years. What about 50 million years? What about a billion years? Would we even be human at all by that time? If we have, through all those years, fought against natural calamities and fought to survive, imagine how many more evolutionary changes would occur. We would definitely have different body structures. We might not be even called human anymore. We probably would be some kind of more advanced, more intelligent form of life if evolution does take us that way. Environmental changes would also be playing an important role in impacting the evolutionary changes that would occur during this future evolution. We would most likely probably be exploring space by then as well, probably our own galaxy or maybe other galaxies as well to become an intergalactic species, which is really cool. Maybe we'd already find at that time the answers to the questions of the universe. The thing is, eventually our goal would be to try and find an explanation or to find answers to what these unanswerable questions are, such as where we are, why are we here, what is this reality, what is this universe, and this is why I said it's cool that we might be an intergalactic species, because that is a step in the direction of trying to answer these questions. And we're already going there, I mean, we've already put people on the moon, we're going to put people on Mars, and who knows what's next, maybe Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, and this is going to lead our species to try and explore and understand space. We humans are the most gifted form of life and organisms because we have cephalization, which means more neurons to the head in evolution. So basically we have brains and high intelligence. I know this would sound weird to say, but in a way I think you could say that the human species is kind of like the leader of all life and all species to kind of speak on behalf of all life if there was ever a reason or a motive. And in the way that all species and life can be seen as like a team or like we're all on the same side. And humans, because we are more intelligent, we can try to actually find the answers to what, why we're here, why life exists. And I know it sounds even weirder to say this, but as advanced and as intelligent as we are, humans are weaker than bacteria. This is in terms of survival. We're not equipped to survive in space and many other extreme conditions like boiling hot or super cold temperatures or places without oxygen and water. So as controversial as it may sound, 
What if future humans were genetically modified or our evolution was artificially controlled so that we could survive in outer space and other extreme environments like any planet in which many conditions that normal humans cannot survive in? This would be beneficial for the progress of all life and all species as a team in order to advance into space and space travel and to understand maybe our skin could be green pigmented with chlorophyll or something similar to plants which could absorb energy from the sun and photosynthesize so that the body meets its own energy needs because plants and some bacteria are the only things that can actually synthesize their own energy and don't need to be heterotrophs or like consume other animals or plants to you know get nutrition or we can adopt a method similar to anaerobic bacteria if we could somehow create an intelligent life form that would have its metabolic processes so advanced and different from anything we know that have defense mechanisms against toxic chemical or things that may cause death then we could defy death itself however if the human race did try to play god and control evolution as we know it that would result in moral and ethical values being broken and violated and there would be a lot of backlash from a lot of people you may think it's not possible to actually alter the course of evolution in ways that we wanted or to genetically modify a human being but great feats have already been performed in this industry there are vegetables that you might see at the market that are already genetically modified gene therapy is a revolutionary advancement in medicine that can alter genes and stop a disease whole clones of organs can be grown from stem cells it's not crazy anymore to think that you can genetically modify a new human For example, being able to decide how the baby's eyes are going to look, the color of its skin, the color of its hair, its physique, etc. If somebody actually decides to do it though or a company or something, they would probably be arrested or banned forever. And any mistakes that could be made might result in this new life form being very very deformed or suffering or dying, which is why it is a big question of morals and ethics to actually do this. The concept of playing with life itself is something that should never be touched. In the end, evolved humans or another intelligent species of life or form of life could finally be able to understand or answer the question, what is the reason and the role of life? In the perspective of this question, what is this reality? That's a concept for another video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.